Greetings everyone! Well, it's closer look time again. This week we venture into the world of found footage horror with the Blair Witch Experience. Now, special treat here, this will be an un- um, I refuse to call it that. An unwrapping, as well as a closer look. This is a really cool box set, a DVD set that includes both uh, of the original movies, so The Blair Witch Project and Blair Witch 2 Book of Shadows, as well as all three PC games that came out around the time, and a cool Stickman pendant. So very nice collector's set for fans of Blair Witch. And that's what we're going to look at this week on A Closer Look. Welcome back. Well, in 1999, the face of horror changed forever when the Blair Witch Project, a nice little indie found footage horror film, exploded in popularity. I mean, it was also one of the first big examples of viral marketing on the internet. They had a website full of uh, news clippings and articles and missing posters and everything. Really cool stuff. In fact, the marketing was so effective that a lot of people thought it was real. Like they thought it was a, a real thing that had happened and that it, it, the, the, the found footage was actual found footage and there was this big mystery about it. Now, reaction to the Blair Witch Project was kind of mixed. Uh, I mean, hardcore horror found fans i think found it kind of lame it just wasn't intense enough for them myself i always really enjoyed it like i really liked the concept of it and the idea of it and even though there had been a few found footage films before uh the last broadcast for example being a big one that's sort of very close to the same time period they hadn't really been as big or as popular as they were in the wake of the Blair Witch Project. Now, a lot of people, whenever I talk about found footage, a lot of people mention Cannibal Holocaust as being technically the first. And I suppose, technically speaking, that is correct. However, it didn't become a full-blown subgenre of horror until the success of this one. I mean, it was kind of a once-in-a-blue-moon thing that you'd see once in a while, like a faux documentary or what have you of supposed real footage. You know, in that case, yes, Cannibal Holocaust was absolutely the first and certainly a very notable example of the genre but it wasn't until literally like more than 20 years later that it actually caught on as a subgenre of horror and that is thanks to the success of the Blair Witch Project. I think if the Blair Witch Project has stayed as sort of just an indie horror film it perhaps would have been a little more respected in the genre as it were. I think honestly it became a little too big for its own good and as such it catches a lot of flack as as being you know not all that scary or what have you but i mean it's one of those types of movies where you got to use your imagination a little bit and, and i mean the same goes for any found footage horror movie i mean you gotta you know suspend your disbelief take it as read that what you're seeing is real and just get into that headspace man and and uh, let it transport you to whatever horrors await in that particular movie. I love the genre myself. I've done a lot of videos about different movies of that genre, and um, I will continue to watch and enjoy it for as long as it exists, which is probably forever by this point. It's pretty firmly ingrained as a subgenre by now. Of course, nowadays, we're not so easily fooled into thinking it's real, but it was a simpler time in 1999. We were all a lot more naive, not to mention the fact the internet was still kind of in the process of exploding and becoming a part of our daily lives. And no film had really been marketed the way this one had. I mean, they even have an hour-long documentary that looks like the kinds of documentaries you would have seen back in the 70s or 80s. I mean, it's very, very well done. And I gotta give credit where credit's due. They did an amazing job marketing this movie. There's also a book that came out that was a com that accompanied it that had uh, very similar content to what you would find on the website. A lot of news articles and so forth. All fake, of course. All fabricated to just build on the mythology. I love what they did and what they tried to do with it and uh, it's a shame that we you know the second one wasn't as well received 
um, because the the concept I felt could easily be sustained across several different movies. I mean, there was a lot of it was a very expansive mythology that they created for it, and there's a lot of uh, opportunities I think for exploring that mythology that uh, sadly we'll probably never get to see. I mean, we did get the new movie. The New Blair Witch, which uh, at the time of this recording I have yet to watch, actually. I just recently picked this up. I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it yet. I'm looking forward to seeing what what they add to the mythology. I mean, it's been a long time. I didn't think we were ever going to get another sequel again. So I was really happy to see that uh, we finally did. So, who knows? Maybe there's still more tales to be told in the world of the Blair Witch. If you're curious as to what I think of the second one, I actually liked it. I thought it had some good ideas. I highly recommend listening to the audio commentary by the director for the second movie because he's very frank and honest in it and apparently there was a ton of studio interference as to what the studio thought the movie should be and what they wanted it to be. But in terms of what he was trying to do, he had some really cool ideas and you can see the essence of that in the final film, but he points out as you listen to the commentary like that bit was added at the insistence of the studio that bit was added to the insistence of the studio the whole order of events in the film was rearranged at the behest of the studio so i would love to see the director's cut of that as i say i mean there's some really cool ideas in the second one but it definitely suffered from the excessive studio interference. And when you listen to the commentary and realize the film that it would have been otherwise, you're like, well, man, I would have loved to see that. That would have been really cool. Why Why can't we see that version? So at the time of this recording, Blair Witch 2 doesn't even have a Blu-ray release. That's how little the studio cares at this point. It's like, great, you got your fingers in, you ruined the movie, and now you don't even care about it. Good job, guys. Way to go. Hope you got your bottom line, jerks. Anyway, let's head down to the black box, tear this sucker open, and take a look. Okay, here we go. The Blair Witch Experience. I remember seeing this box set around, and uh, I think the reason I didn't pick it up at the time was because I already had the first one, and uh, all I needed was the second one, so I just picked up the second one. I think I actually got the second one used originally. I didn't even get it new. But uh, yeah, $5.99 for this. Marked down from $7.99. <laughs> but I couldn't believe this. I found this at Value Village. Uh, $5.99, brand new, factory sealed. I think I said that before, but it bears repeating because it's a hell of a deal. I don't remember what this went for originally, but it was definitely definitely not $5.99. So, all right, let's uh, let's open this bad boy up. As you can see, lots of lots of extras on there. It's basically the the, the regular standalone editions in a box, essentially. Okay, so let's unwrap this here. Wow, back when saran wrap was really difficult to get into. Okay, hold on a sec. Here we go. All right, so. We're Opening it up here. Very nice. So the box is a little crunched, as you can see. There. There you go. You can see it. You really see it there. Holy moly. But uh, but that's okay. I mean, just give, given what a cool collectible this is, I'm not too uh, broken up about that. So let's uh, slide everything out. Ugh. Is it going to come out? Okay, there we go. Oh, there was a piece of tape on it. That's ancient. That the tape is literally almost 20 years old. When did this set come out, anyway? 2000, I guess. Holy moly, this set is 18 years old. That's crazy. Okay, so here, of course, we have the PC games, the Blair Witch series. I don't know if these are even going to work on my new computer, but I will definitely try. And if they do, uh, we will play them on Twitch. And uh, you'll see them here on YouTube as well. So very cool. Looks like everything is individually shrink-wrapped here. So we have, of course, the original Blair Witch Project. I used to own this DVD. Uh, great DVD, I have to say, uh, loaded with extras. Uh, a lot of the times with found footage films, you don't get a lot of extras because I guess they want to preserve the illusion of reality. But uh, with Blair Witch Project, they did not skimp on the extras, man. It was good stuff. And then, of course, we have the second one, Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2, which I know people are very divided on. 
Um, I really liked it. As I said in the comments there, there's a lot of cool aspects to this that I, I liked. I thought it was an interesting direction to take things, uh, kind of playing with the whole concepts of reality. And then here, we uh, take this out. There we go. And there's our little uh, Stickman pendant with uh, with twine for the uh, for the actual necklace, which which makes perfect sense. That's exactly as it should be. So let's uh, let's take this out here. I am going to uh, wear this basically, but uh, there we go. So we got nice nice twine. Obviously, all gnarly and curly because it's been in here for almost 20 years. But uh, there's the uh, the pendant. Let's see if we can get a nice close up of that pendant, and you can uh, see it for yourself. Uh, just give me a moment here. We'll zoom in. There we go. So quite uh, quite nice. Pew it seems to be pewter, which is a great uh, material for making pendants like this doesn't have much weight to it it's very very light so yeah I, I like pendants that have a little bit of heft to them just because they hang better but uh, well, that's okay I mean this is fine this is about this is a little heavier than some of my onk necklaces so very cool so of course as was often the case with box sets like this uh, back in the early 2000s even the uh, DVD cases inside are of course shrink wrap. So let's uh, let's open this up as well. Oh, I like this. I like it when they do it like this. You just kind of look at that. Nice, easy, easy to unwrap. Oh, this is wonderful. There we go. Oh, and that's interesting. The security sticker was actually on the saran wrap. You don't see that very often. But uh, there we go. We are open. So let's uh, let's open this up. Oh, okay, that, that just, that's stupid. Like, can you see that? It's actually, the security sticker is on the disc. Like, how lame is that? Let's just get that off of there. All right, thankfully it came off fairly easily. But uh, that, that would have been a real piss off. So there we go. So we got the disc. Very nice. And oh my God, look at this. An insert booklet. This is something you definitely don't see very often anymore. Holy moly, there's a lot of stuff here. So if we take a look at the booklet, got massive chapter listing on the back. That is a lot of chapters. Holy moly! Oh, that's not chapters. Never mind. I, I was, I didn't see it clearly because it was upside down, and uh, I need to get my glasses replaced. That's basically a list of other uh, DVDs. Oh, there we go. That that's a little more sane of a chapter list. <laughs> Very cool, very cool. So here they, uh, here it is, the DVD of the Blair Witch Project. You can't imagine how absurd that statement is to us here at Hacks and Films. Another ridiculous post-it to add to our 1999 calendar. Us five boys have sat around and witnessed in between some vicious foosball games. All the madness with our mouths agape, occasionally wiping the drool off from the sides of our chins. It has been and continues to be an amazing dream ride into the unknown where all we can do is keep our arms and legs inside the car and hope that the end doesn't come too abruptly. So once again, here it is, the DVD of The Blair Witch Project, a DVD of a film shot mostly on Hi8 video in Maryland in October of 1997 for 22000 bucks by a ragtag group of filmmakers spending their savings and risking their already pockmarked credit ratings on one last-ditch effort to become filmmakers. We hope you enjoy our film as well as the other stuff we've added in this edition, but most importantly, thank you for buying or renting it. Peace to your brother, The Haxon Five, Orlando, Florida, August 19th. 1999. So that's a nice letter from the producers there. That's uh, that's pretty cool. I like that. And then what do we have here? We have ah yes, I remember I was talking about this. the uh, The website was amazing. Um, there was, I mean, it really was the first sort of properly virally marketed movie. And uh, I mean, this this just broke so much new ground in terms of popularizing the found footage genre. And also just the whole uh, using the internet as the primary marketing tool. Um, I remember browsing that website, which I'm sure is long gone by now. Just all the faux news articles and, and historical documents and photos and 
ancient drawings and things. There's so much stuff on there. It was just massive and amazing. And then here we have an Artisan Films catalog. Oh, look at this. Look at all those DVDs you can get. Artisan Films no longer exists, by the way. <laughs> yeah, they went out of business a few years ago. And uh, so you may be wondering, well, how come they, there's a new Blair Witch movie then? Well, basically, uh, another studio purchased, I guess, the assets of Artisan Films. And one of the things they got was the rights to uh, Blair Witch, which is pretty cool. So uh, just a quick look at the extras here. We have... Newly discovered footage, so basically deleted scenes. Director and producer commentary, which I'm sure I've listened to. I must have listened to that at the time. It's the 4x3 full screen version, because of course that's the aspect ratio that everything was filmed in. Uh, 2.0 Dolby Surround, animated interactive menu, scene access, production notes, cast and crew information. You know it's old when they list the stuff like that in the special features. Uh, theatrical teaser and trailers, Curse of the Blair Witch and mythology. The Curse of the Blair Witch, I should mention, that's an hour-long documentary done in the style of like documentaries about supernatural goings-on and whatnot that were done in the 70s and 80s. It's really well done and really adds a ton of stuff to the mythology. It really gives you a lot of the backstory. Highest possible recommendation, watch that documentary and then watch the movie. You will get so much more out of it that way. It it's really makes it the complete experience. Uh, and then there's DVD-ROM features featuring a map, excerpts from the dossier, and excerpts from the comic book. By the way, if you're wondering about what the dossier is, that would be this. This wonderful book. And if you look at the, uh, the cover, it's got all the handprints on it in glossiness. And then the rest of the cover is matte. And then if the, the light hits it just kind of right, it, it appears to be just almost solid black. But until you hit it at an angle and you get the, the handprints. So what this is, is this is, again, uh, another companion piece that further builds on the mythology. So if we take a look inside, it's essentially just this exhaustive amount of material. Um, all about... So it's like interviews and timelines and... Uh, police documents and crime scene photos and uh, it goes even further into the back history of the the mythology of the Blair Witch and uh, you get more about Rustin Parr in here and uh, yeah it's just it's a fantastic book if you're a fan of the movie you absolutely need to have this book in your collection because it adds so so much to the mythology and uh, expands even further on it. Actually, a lot of the material that was on the website is in this book, so don't be too broken up about missing out on the website, because um, most of the stuff, most of the relevant stuff is in here. Uh, they did one for the second book, or sorry, the second movie as well, uh, Book of Shadows, but I never got around to picking it up. I need to grab that, because it's one of the few sort of significant Blair Witch things that I don't have. And then, of course, we have Blair Witch 2, Book of Shadows, the very divisive... Uh, sequel. <laughs> Again, I really liked a lot of the ideas in this. I really wish we could see the director's cut of it. So, who directed this? Joe Berlinger. Joe Berlinger. Berlinger? Berlinger. Anyway, fellow who's done a lot of really good movies. And uh, it would be great to to see the director's cut of this. I, I, I was really kind of hoping that the new movie would be a huge hit and would create a little more... Oh, okay, now this is lame. Look at this. Okay, so we have... Uh, Security sticker on the saran wrap, and then another security sticker underneath. So we have double security sticker action here, folks. What do these stickers on the thing say? Free Blair Witch computer game with mail-in coupon. Okay. Get the Blair Witch uh, computer game of the Ellie Kedward tale. I think we have that, actually, on the... Uh, the PC things. Also, DVD plus CD, the first DVD-CD combo disc. I'll show you what that means in just a moment here. Kind of interesting, DVD plus CD. Huh, what's that all about? Well, let's, uh, let's find out. Hold on. Let's go figure out how to best take this security sticker off. Oh, come on, really? No, don't, don't be like that. Why you gotta be like that? Hold on a second. Here, look at my glasses. 
I'm uh, nearsighted, so I take my glasses off to do things close up. Yeah, it's just uh, just the way my eyes are built, folks. Which means I take them off to read. Okay, there we go. We got this. There we go. Like a pro. Interesting to uh, see a little bit of color on the security sticker. as the DVD logo in blue. Normally it's just all black. Anyway. The stupid little things I get fascinated by. Alright, so here's Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. Here we go. So, you can see this one has way more special features, funny enough. Um, and what's this? A listing of the CD soundtrack. Yes, at first you're thinking, ew, flipper disc. But no, this is actually kind of cool. Because on one side, we have the movie. I guess technically it's... Uh, I guess technically this side is the movie, but the label for the movie is on the other side because they always give you the... You, you know how it is. They have the label on one side, the content on the other. So movie label here, movie here. You can see the sort of gold color. That was the color of dual layer discs for in the early years. So it shows you how old this is. And the other side is actually the CD soundtrack. So it's a double disc. And if you feel it, it, it actually feels a little bit thicker because they've got... Uh, and you can see, I don't know how well you can see, but there's actually like double, uh, double layer. Oh, yeah, you can see that really well. Hold on a second. There. So if you look, you can see it's it's almost like two discs put together. See? You see that double, double thickness? Uh, it plays fine. I, I've played this before. But if we compare it to, say, the um, the regular Blair Witch disc... See, that is way thinner. So if we do a sort of a side by side. You can see the difference, eh? Like one is sort of double thick. Interesting, eh? That's probably why they didn't do it very often, because I imagine that probably did cause. I'm putting this in the wrong one. Hold on. Uh, I, I imagine that probably did cause playback problems for some people. It's a noticeably heavier disc as well. I remember noticing that when I first got it. Like I thought it was a really cool idea, but the actual physical implementation of it is a little uh, janky. And wow, that's as unfocused as it gets. Let's have some uh, Blair Witch magic and get that back in focus, shall we? There we go. Okay, so what do we got here? More inserts. Very nice. Oh, hold on. Gonna make sure we get everything here. There. Okay. Oh, so we have like a product catalog of Blair Witch stuff. And well, so first we'll take a look at this one. This is just the uh, the booklet that's movie specific. Look at that massive chapter list. Yeah, okay. You won't fool me twice. So there we go. Book of Shadows, Blair Witch 2. So we got some notes from the director. The commentary on this, you got to listen to the commentary on this, even if you hate the movie. We want to know why certain aspects of the movie sucked? Well, listen to the commentary, and Joe Berlinger will actually tell you why. He's very frank and honest in that commentary. So yeah, really cool stuff. Chapter list there. Let's see what we got here. So Blair Witch Crafts. Ooh, what is this? Collector's Edition set of Blair Witch 2 coasters. Ooh, neat, with all the sort of different runes on them. And free Blair Witch computer game. Awesome. Get uh, Blair, the Blair Witch Hunt, and the stick man, the handprints. Oh, there's the pendant. There's the pendant right there. That's this, this pendant here. I got that. <laughs> and let's see what else we got here. This is cool. Grab.com. Does that site even exist anymore? Oh, look, the Blair Witch Sonic Screwdriver. Yeah, I don't know. It's a glow pen. Okay. Kind of uh, cool. Wow, they were just, like, marketing the hell out of this. Oh, the Blair Witch Files. Yes. Skin Slip uh, actually got a set of these from uh, one of his viewers. I'm so jealous. But they did a series of books, like actual novels in the Blair Witch universe. I do not have any of those. I would love to get them because, uh, as I say, I just I love the mythology of this. Here we go. 
So here's the Blair Witch game. So we got uh, Volume 1, Rust and Par. Volume 2, The Legend of Coffin Rock. And, well, and I guess Volume 3 is the one that they gave away free with this one. So then if you really want the soundtrack separately, you can get it separately. And uh, there you go. So, wow, they, they really had a whole bunch of stuff. Oh, yeah, there's The Curse of the Blair Witch. You could actually get the documentary separately on VHS. On the DVD, they just included everything together. Uh, what's this one? Paradise Lost. Oh, right. Right. I have never seen that. That's from uh, another one. Oh, and what is this? Okay, I've never seen this either. I need to get that, apparently. There's The Massacre of the Burkittsville 7, The Blair Witch Legacy. I, I, You know what? I got this used originally, so I probably didn't even get this catalog. So I didn't even know any of this stuff existed. So you're seeing me discover all of this for the first time. <laughs> I want that, because it's got two more faux documentaries about uh, more more backstory of the Blair Witch universe. Well, holy crap, there's so much stuff I didn't even know about. Well, clearly I'm going to be having to hit hit up eBay and uh, third-party sellers on Amazon. All right, last but most definitely not least, let's, uh, let's crack open this bad boy here and check out the computer games. We'll just uh, zoom in a tad. All right. This is very cool. You know what, I'm going to try to install these um, just before uh, we go. And then I'll let you know by the end if they work. And if they do work, then uh, we will play them very, very soon. So we got Volume 1, Volume 2, and why is it not mentioned Volume 3? Volume 3, there we are. Okay, the Ellie Kedward tale. So there we go. So the Blair Witch series so it's basically a big digipack. So you open it up there, uh -huh. and there's the first one, rated M for mature. This is going to be some intense shit, yo. Oh, there we go. Oh, that's really nice. I like how they're all different colors. That actually looks really, really snazzy. Let's pull that back a bit. Yeah, look at that. That is nice. I like that. Very cool. And then uh, if we look on the back, just gives us some information. So let's uh, let's just quickly see what they're about here. So, uh, so volume one, Rust and Par. This is the first in a series of three games that delve into the rumors and unanswered questions surrounding the mythos of the Blair Witch. We're just gonna put these here while we're chit chatting. All right. Um, set in 1841, the first adventure pits government special investigator Doc Holliday against the ancient evil that drove hermit Rustin Parr to abduct and slay seven children in Burkittsville, Maryland. Along the way, Holliday will have to interact with the stricken townspeople, investigate hidden legends and arcane rituals, and seek to unravel a twisted mystery that still haunts the town. Rustin Parr combines traditional adventure elements such as research, exploration, puzzle solving with a healthy dose of heart-pounding action to create a terrifying gaming experience. Now that's interesting that it's set in 1841 because according to the documentary, Rustin Parr was from the 1940s. So I'm a little confused. Perhaps the game explains. Uh, Blair Witch Volume 2, Legend of Coffin Rock. Blair Witch Volume 2, The Legend of Cop and Rock, is the second installment in the game series devoted to unraveling the mystery of the Blair Witch. A mysterious soldier stricken by amnesia is found in Burkittsville by a strange young girl named Robin Weaver. A man without memory, he is quickly named Lazarus by the girl's spiritualist grandmother. After Robin mysteriously disappears into the forest of the Black Hills, Lazarus is drawn into a world of human sacrifice and supernatural terror as he discovers the horrible role that the evil in the forest has in store for young Robin. With the power of Nocturne technology and gameplay that mixes adventure and fast-paced action, The Legend of Coffin Rock is a uniquely satisfying romp through hell on earth. Sorry, I can't get over the first one being set in 1841. You know what? I think that's a typo. I think it's actually set in 1941. That's what I think. Um... Okay, and then where's the description for Volume 3? Volume 3, the Ed Ellie Kedward tale. By the way, in the new movie, they pronounce it Ely, and that was driving me nuts. It's clearly Ellie. It's not Ely. 
Anyway, Blair Witch Volume 3, The Ellie Kedward Tale, is the final thriller in the mind-shattering three-part mystery that explores the heart of the Blair Witch myth. See, that would make more sense, because uh, I know in, in um, I think it was the comic books, there's a series of comic books, which I do have, I don't know where they are offhand, they're packed away somewhere. Um, the comic books were in reverse chronological order, so they started with the most recent stuff, and then worked backwards over the course of the series, so it makes sense that the uh, games would do the same, so yeah, I think that's just a typo. Um, boop, 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 boop. Legend originates in 1785 when Ellie Cadward is accused of witchcraft and is forever banished from the Blair Township. She withdraws into the silence of the woods and is forgotten until the chilling disappearance of the children begins. Jonathan Pry, once a pastor but now in conf conflict with his own shattered faith, takes on the role of fanatic witch hunter. He journeys to the town of Blair where, where he must master all forms of magic, white and black, if he is to save anyone, including himself. The Ellie Kedward tale is geared toward action sequences and features a spell-based combat system that draws from three distinct disciplines of magic. Excellent. And we get some little screenshots of them there. Very little. You can barely see them. I could zoom in on them, but I don't know if you'd really see much more detail. So anyway. Fine, I'll give you a closer look at them. There we go. We don't call this a closer look for nothing. You want even closer? Okay. All right, so there's the first one. There's the second one. And there's the third one. And there we go, the complete Blair Witch experience. And I guess just to be complete, we might as well take a quick look at the Blu-ray of the new movie. Alrighty. So, between doing the intro and this part, I actually have watched the movie. Uh, I watched it the other night, and uh, honestly, I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a fun addition to the uh, to the mythos. It expands a little bit on the mythology, uh, but for the most part, just kind of, you know, refreshes things, gets, gets the series back to its found footage roots, and uh, was a lot of fun. I actually really enjoyed it a lot. This is one of the reasons to get the slipcover, because the, the coloring is reversed. So you got this design here, this design here. Very cool. I should say there's a ton of special features on here. It doesn't look like much from the description on the back here. What do we got here? We have uh, audio commentary with director Adam Wingard and writer Simon Barrett. Neverending Night, The Making of Blair Witch, six-part documentary. And House of Horrors, Exploring the Set. So, okay. So we have the feature-length commentary, which is cool. We've got uh, House of Horrors, which explores the house set in it. Uh, which is quite an awesome set, by the way. And that's about 15 minutes long. But then the six-part documentary is like almost two hours. It's like a two-hour-long documentary all about the making of the movie. And they go really in-depth. And they actually also feature interviews with the original creators of the Blair Witch Project, uh, the, direct, the two directors and the producer. And they were actually pretty heavily involved with this and had a lot of inputs into it and stuff. So that's pretty cool. Set aside the digital copy disc. So we open it up. It is a reversible cover. Being uh, in Canada, we've got the French version on the back, if you prefer, or if you're French. <laughs> and then that's it. But otherwise, the, uh, the covers are the same. All right, so let's uh, put everything back in the box here. <clears throat> so we'll start with... Uh, I guess we'll start with Blair Witch 2... Oh no, wait a second, we got to start with the video games, as they go in like that. And then this goes in like that. I'm going to keep the, uh, the pendant out though, because I want to kind of keep it on hand. Oh, wait a second. No, let's uh, put that in last. So let me put this in like that. And Oh, no, wait a second, I'm doing this the wrong way. <laughs> this is not complicated, Sean. Oh, by the way, there's this, the mystery of S. Reaver. Throughout the movie, there are secret messages. Well, it's, it's basically, you'll see words written in reverse. And then if you spot all the words, write them down and put them in a particular order, it, it gives you a secret message. So pretty cool. If you just want to know what the secret message is, I'm sure it's online somewhere. You're on the internet. Use it. All right. Put that in there, and then finally, a 
Are we? Is this actually going to work? Hold on. We do it like. How does this even fit in here? Hold on a second. Is it supposed to? I would assume it's supposed to go. Yeah. Hold on a second. I got this. Yeah, it's supposed to. It's supposed to fit in there. So like this part kind of. Hold on. <clears throat> <laughs> ah! Let's make it as awkward as possible. Really? There. Okay. Good. We got it. <laughs> ah! All right. This has gone way, way long. Let's uh, do our closing remarks. And there you go. The Blair Witch Experience. Whoa. It's shrink wrapped again. What the hell? I think the Blair Witch is interfering with my Closer Look video. Anyway, that is it for this week's Closer Look. Hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you next week for another one, whatever it may be. So until then, thanks for watching. Big thanks to my Patreon sponsors. Be sure to join us over on the Discord. You'll find the link in the description uh, for just general fun and geeky chat and randomness. We have a lot of, a lot of good times over there. And I'll see you next time. Until then, sayonara.